Hello everybody and welcome to the second part in the series where I show you a bunch of hit film intro templates that I made. I know this is two weeks in a row of pretty much the same video idea, uh, but next week we will have something different. So today is more of a tutorial, uh, the previous video was more of a here are some free intro templates for you to download, so I'm going to give it a difficulty rating on this video. This one's going to be 3 stars out of 5, because you do need to know how composite shots work and things like that pretty well, but I will be going through stuff so you understand them. So first of all, we're just going to go through the very first intro. Now this first intro is this one right here, and what I just want to mention is that, of course, the all the music uh, in all of these intros, as you can see, is from NCS, or No Copyright Sounds, and also this this footage, as well as some footage I used in the third intro, is from footagecrate.com. Again, I'll leave the link in the description. But yeah, so for this one, it's pretty basic. You can see that it's just transparent until this bottom plane comes in here. And if we just open this up, we can see that there are two keyframes to keyframe the position in, which is essentially just to animate the position so that it comes in like so. And you can see that this has also got a levels histogram effect on it, because, as you'll see, these are all the same plane, and that's why they're all the same color. So, this levels histogram makes this one darker, and it makes this one medium dark, it makes this one a bit lighter than that, a bit lighter, and so there are different levels histogram effects on each of these to adjust the brightness of each of these. So how do we change the colors? Now, the easiest way to do this is going to this gray layer that I've created, and just go ahead and search for the hue shift or the hue saturation and lightness. Both can do similar things. And you can just drag the hue shift around and it'll change the color of the background plane. So if we want to make it red, we can see it plays back red now. And the same tonal variations occur. It gets lighter and lighter red, even into pink, and then it goes away. Now in this anime strike effect, if you go into the effects, I've already added a hue saturation and lightness. And in the master here, you can change up the hue shift if you want to make it red or to make it blue, whatever color you want for this effect as well. Of course, you can change the text color and font, which I'm going to do right now as well because I think that the uh, default one is kind of terrible. Um, and you can go ahead and change all of that here as well. Now, in the second intro, um, I'm just going to go through first of all how I created this. So. The most basic thing that I've got to go through first is the text layer. You'll notice that this one has this little blue icon here. It's got it it's highlighted, uh, which means that it's got motion blur on. If we turn this off, you can see it just rotates around like so. But if it's got motion blur on, uh, it rotates around like that. And you know that it, you, if you want to, if you don't want to have that on, then you don't need to, and you can just have it without the motion blur. It just looks kind of weird. So that's why I prefer it with motion blur. So then what I've done is, let's just go into the transform at the beginning. I've set everything to be uh, 0 in the scale, and then in the rotation I've set it to be 10 times. And then just right here, when it comes to the, the stop here, the scale is at 100% and it's at 0. So slowly it turns uh, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, and anti-clockwise, and then it comes here, and then just another keyframe here to make it bounce off a bit, and then when the, when the beat drops, then uh, the position and everything remains uh, pretty stable. I just had to move it down a bit because my positioning when I made the layer was a bit off. But that's fine. Then the next thing is in the effects. So the shake effect is what makes it shaking around uh, once the bass drops. So as you can see, it's zero here. And then it's been bumped up all the way to 676. And then it just bumps around like so, and then it slowly moves down to 100. And the shake effect is a really great way um, to just have shake in your videos. Um, you can mess around with the speed, things like that, to make it um, more of a speedy kind of shake. Um, and the amount is just like the actual movement, how far it moves. Um, and then it slows down to a, a solid 40 uh, at the end. So turning off both glows, I'm just going to actually this up to full so you guys can see. The first glow is a really tight, uh, intense glow, and the second one is much bigger, a really big glow, um, and it's also pretty intense, but uh, it's much bigger radius glow. And that's pretty much all the text done. 
Now you'll notice that here I've just got a background plane. It's a black plane with a light flare layer and I've simply keyframed the opacity of the layer so that it fades in uh, like so just when the beat drops. And then we've got this star travel. Now this can be found uh, under the effects panel, under the presets, under the 3D effects. Under quick 3D, you'll see star travel right here. And all I've done with this star travel is I've keyframed uh, the amount of rain so that there's more uh, particles coming along as the as the text comes in. And then I've also uh, added a bunch of glows. So if we just go to a frame like so, the first glow, as you can see, just uh, makes everything orange. I think I've just duplicated this glow to enhance the effect. And similarly to what I've done with the text, these two glows have a small radius, these two, and this one has a really big radius. And finally, this grey layer up top doesn't really do anything until the end. I've just uh, added a, I think it was a level histogram effect, and I've just keyframed it to get brighter and brighter so it fades out to white at the very end. So that's the second intro. Then the third intro I created using some more footage create assets. Uh, this really, really nice uh, f flat splash transition. Um, they have loads of really good effects like this. And what I've done is they have like four different free uh, versions of the same kind of transition. And you can use them, but what I've done is I've simply duplicated it and uh, changed the hue. As you can see here, each one of them has a hue shift effect on them. And each one of them has a different hue, so it's the actual same transition just a different color every time. I really like the colors on that one. That's pretty. But um, that's essentially it. I've just uh, timed it and it, it's and it was transparent to begin with, so uh, that makes it much easier. Now in the text layers, all I've done is I've got a hue shift effect on here. This hue shift effect is on every single one of the text layers, and that makes it so that it gradually changes color See, it starts off a really green color, and then it goes to a more bluey kind of green over here. And then in the final one, I've added a different hue shift effect, and it just changes the hue from red on this end all the way to red on this end as well. So it just goes through the entire rainbow. Now that one's pretty easy to understand. Now all these planes are white, but if I go ahead and right click on them, and in the properties I select a color like an orange right here, and notice that they all have a hue shift effect on them. So if you decide to change the color of your plane, uh, then you can go ahead and do that and they will all be different because they've all got different hue shift effects on. Of course you can delete uh, those effects as well. I, re I recommend that if you do want to change the color, you make it uh, kind of subtle um, and not too strong. I should mention as well that with each of these I've keyframed the audio levels so that it starts off at negative 60 comes to zero and then fades back out again. Now in the fourth intro here, so all that I've got here is this fire explosion effect. So if you just go ahead into the effects panels, you can go down to the presets, uh, into the 3D effects once again. There's something like large flame explosion right here. Or what I did, you can just go into quick 3D and drag the raw fire explosion effect on. And all I've done is I've just, I haven't even messed around with it all that much. I've just changed the duration so if you go into here into general, you can see the duration here, um, and also things like the growth, so that it grows over time, uh, and things like that, to make sure that it's in time with the music, and that it fades away with the music as well. And then I've got my two text layers, which are you know pretty just ordinary text layers, uh, except for one thing which I'll go over later. But then I've got this grey layer right here, which just has a light flare effect on it. Now both these text layers have a set matte effect on it. And if you don't know what the set matte effect is, it's a really useful effect. So if I just go ahead and uh, select this text, for example, and we can open up the set matte effect. And what I've done is I've essentially set it so that this text is only visible where the explosion is visible. And in the last intro, I've got a couple of people uh, asking me about this kind of stuff. Um, so this intro, uh, this is just this comp um, has got this logo comp, which is separate and I've made over here and just this text layer. And the reason I've got it all in a comp here is because well, it makes it easier to look at and also because the set matte effect doesn't work properly unless it's in a comp like this. So let's jump into this comp and you can see here uh, that we've just got the circles going around each other 
um, and then of course they go away at the end. And the way I've done this is, if we just look at one of these planes, actually let's have a look at the white one, it's probably easy to see. So pretty much what this is, is it's just a circle. Now at frames like this, it's got all 360 degrees filled in, but uh, at other frames it's only got say 180 degrees, um, and then at some frames even 0 degrees. And not only is that being animated, um, also the position of it is being animated, so it's all moving around uh, together. Now to create this on your own, just so I can show you guys what to do, um, I just created a white plane, and then uh, down in the warp section, you can search for the polar warp, and because it's a plane, it won't uh, actually morph any of the colors or anything, it's just a solid plane. And you can see in the range here, you can uh, do exactly what I did, which is just keyframe uh, the range so that it only shows different amounts of it. I've simply keyframed it to go from 0 to, to 180, to 0 to 180, um, and then I've also keyframed the rotation here so that it all rotates around. Now I mentioned in my previous tutorial uh, something that looks less like this, and uh, if I just open these up, more like this. And this is a kind of spirally thing, so all I've done is, after the polar warp, I've just dragged a vortex displacement warp uh, on each of these, um, and it's warped them to give a more spirally kind of look. So if you want that, then you can just go ahead into here and just turn those effects on. Again, if you want to change the color of any of these planes, just right click on it, select the properties, and you can set the color. So for example, if I want that to be pure black, uh, I can just make that pure black like so. Either way, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you all in the next one. Stay shiny. Bye.